let me thank the Jesuits for organizing these events and for all you do to promote action against climate change. What you do is important because I think we can all agree that the greatest movements for social change in history, 200 years ago, the abolition of slavery, 100 years and 50 years ago, the emancipation of the working classes, 100 years ago, women's rights, 50 years ago, rights of the disabled and indeed for minorities, all these movements have been built on ethical foundations, more often than not inspired by men and women of religious faith. Famous encyclicals have changed the world from Rerum Novarum 130 years ago to Pacem in Terrace, calling for disarmament and Populorum Progressio, calling for an end to imperialism and more recently Laudatory Si, which I want to talk about today and which is echoed in the book by the Holy Father, Let Us Dream the Path to a Better Future. A book which warns that if we do not act on climate, it won't be the richest or the most powerful who suffer, it will be the poorest and most vulnerable here and around the world. And we will betray the children and grandchildren of today's citizens. And yes, that includes the children and grandchildren of today's fossil fuel workers, if we do not act. Shrinking from the climate fight is not an option. And just as we need to set up global cooperation to vaccinate the world and prevent a going divide between the vaccine rich who will live and the vaccine poor at risk of dying, so too we need to step up global cooperation on climate change. And I immediately say that you have been right to call these meetings because this is the moment, this is the time, this is the hour. All our previous work has been a preparation for this moment, for we have just a few days to make a success of COP26 in meeting and mastering the climate challenge. And to show that after years of protectionism, of building walls, imposing tariffs, of America first style ideologies, and most recently vaccine nationalism, we can show that international cooperation can actually work. Now, there's no longer serious dispute about the cause of climate change, no disagreement either about what might happen as Arctic and Antarctic ice disappears, floods spread, the earth becomes parched and threats to biodiversity multiply. The days when amazingly a climate denying senator in America could display a snowball in Congress and claim proof that global warming did not exist are over. Climate change affects us all, not in the long distance future, but in the here and now, and it will get worse. You know, when you buy or rent a house, you can ask, can I afford it? Is it in a safe neighborhood? Is it close to my workplace or the school for my kids? But think of a world where you will also have to ask, will it be underwater in the coming decades? Or will climate change mean my neighborhood becomes a drought zone? So there can be no disagreement either about the steps we must urgently take today. This year and this decade will determine whether this planet is habitable for future generations. This is indeed the make or break decade. And COP26 is the world's best hope against the upcoming climate catastrophe. While last year will be remembered for our collective failure to adequately tackle the pandemic and to come together as an international community, the year 2021 must not be remembered for our collective failure to halt climate change. Now, it's great news that 60% of countries may now have some sort of net zero carbon goal. And cities, companies and charities have also made net carbon zero targets but the commitments that the largest countries have made are sadly not nearly sufficient to limit warming to the 1.5 degrees promised in the Paris Climate Agreement. So we must at COP26 ratchet up the commitment countries make to get to net carbon zero. We must require companies worldwide to disclose their carbon footprints. We must mobilize science to deliver ever cleaner energy to end our dependence on oil, gas and coal. We should be planting trees, restoring the soil, removing carbon from the atmosphere. And we need a global Green New Deal that creates new jobs from sustainable technologies and industries. And this requires a coordinated green recovery plan, new obligations on companies, agreement on fossil fuel subsidies and phasing them out and carbon pricing, the stepping up of investment in new technologies and the amplification of nature-based solutions. The missing element is finance. Over the course of the next year, we have to agree the funding of a global Green New Deal. The situation is perilous, but we are not powerless. We should feel hopeful and motivated to create a climate that offers a home to everyone and is harmful to no one. And I believe we need to create an even bigger public movement that starts perhaps as a ripple that then becomes a torrent of demand for change. In 1962, President Kennedy told America it should complement its declaration of independence with a declaration of interdependence. 
every single faith we know, without exception, Judaism, Hinduism, Sikhism, Islam, as well as Christianity, have the same golden rule at the heart of their faith, to do to others what you would have them do to you. Our independence provides the platform for the international cooperation we need and through which we transcend the I and the me and I want it now selfish individualism that is so dominant today. And instead, we think of the power of us. These will be the tests to see if today's leaders have the imagination and the vision to set aside the corrosive nationalism of the last decade and demonstrate that a country's national interests are best advanced not by isolating themselves from the rest of the world, but by cooperation. And if we do so and champion the empathy and solidarity that can underpin cooperation, this will give us hope. And so in Pope Francis's words, that we have to only dare to dream, we could create and will create a better world as men and women of faith brought that new world into being.